into the actual deliver. No stream of Kakuya Summer. Love is love is war. There we go. There we go. We're good to go. We're good to go. So yes, I actually return. I actually have returned. Actually, come up with another episode of Kakuya Summer. Love is war episode two on this stream actually. And as we know, episode one was freaking brilliant. I must say, out of freaking nowhere, this anime comes out and just like yo. Stuff is good. I'm like, yeah, fam. It's already good this season, but it's even better now. So yeah, I mean, I was absolutely like amazed how good this show actually was. It was just, it was out of this world. It's basically a Shaft show. I was like, Shaft, my boys, are you actually behind all this? It's A1 Pictures just a front at this point. Is it? Are they just an entity that everyone just takes over and then it's actually just Shaft? Because my God, was it good? The direction was fantastic. The actual kind of everything was just beautiful. Bonissimo. It's buenísimo, I must say. It's buenísimo. So, yes, I actually hope episode, episode 2 doesn't very kind of deliver upon episode 1 in even more kind of epic fashion. Because if it does, all oh my boys, we got ourselves probably the best show of the whole entire year besides Dororo Dor Dor as well. So, it's actually point to actually go live. Because I am excited to see what actually the series actually goes. So, oh, there we go. Gone live. Four. Thanks, Twitch. You just completely just ruined ruin my um, stream just that sec for a second there. Like, thanks. Thanks, Twitch. Thank you. <laughs> just ruin everything for a second. And. Yeah, that's what I need. Is that. And. Lover's War episode. Ooh. And I believe with that. I believe with that we are good to go. Are we? Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. So, anyway, that's when it's full screen to show on the road. So in three, two, one. That's the thing absolutely now. So I guess it's actually going to be, an, be a thing all the time with the opening. So second, I was like, did I get the right episode? I must also say it's opening is the best opening of the whole entire season. Like, I will not I will not accept anything else because this opening is absolutely fantastic. It's like the greatest homage to like the sixties and seventies as well. It's just it's so freaking good. Like, I thought to myself, oh Mob Psycho, best opening of the whole entire season. I was like, nah. This one came out like yo fan, by the way. By the way. I was like, oh no. I think I actually can in free line up some of the scenes with James Bond as well. Some of the actual opening segments kind of line up with James Bond quite quite well, actually. It's really cool. It's just the chorus section so freaking cool.
I still, I still love that transition. That transition's amazing. It's just, it's so freaking cool. I love it. It still feels like a shaft show, to be honest. It's still it's still a shaft show at heart. God, this show is so freaking good. <laughs>
I love how all of these events kind of seem like it's, um... It kind of seems like something you would you associate with something completely different, but it works so well in this in the context of the narrative. It's so well done. I love how the events that like he thinks are going to happen or should happen don't make sense in the context of the narrative itself. It's it's really well done because you kind of think you kind of think that's how it's meant to go, but it's not actually how it goes in this narrative at all. <laughs> I also like the fact that some of the um, some of the actual battles themselves also incorporate everything about the character as well. It's actually quite well done. Like not one facet of the actual character is left out. All the facets are actually used.
<laughs> and there you go. It's actually they properly use the actual uh, James Bond reference. I mean, even the OST itself kind of has that very, um, that very 70s aesthetic to it as well.
<laughs> even the actual um even um the actual kind of um even the actual lighting that's what's in the same my brain just stopped for a second there. The lighting's actually really well done in this show as well. Like in certain sections the lighting's actually quite well done. And there we go, that's episode two. I mean, yeah, it was on par, I think, with episode one. Yeah, I mean, the problem is, they're two different kind of extremes in a way. Because episode one kind of establishes the whole entirety of what's going on here. Episode two kind of builds upon it. But I think it's still really well done, the show as a, as a whole. It's actually it's actually so freaking good. Like, the actual direction's fantastic. Everything just, it just clicks, if you get what I mean. Like, everything works in tandem with each other. It doesn't... It, one thing doesn't really fall out of place, if you get what I mean. The OST is fantastic. The use of the flashbacks is amazing. The idea of how it's actually very VHS, it kind of it kind of ties into the aesthetic of the actual kind of show itself. That kind of very, in a way, um... 70s... 70s, like... What's the word? Like, spy movie kind of uh, movie. Kind of aesthetic. It fits very well into it. It's just... It, all around, it works so well. I really can't fault it. I mean, if the show can continue like this for the whole entire time of its runtime, it'd be fantastic. Because it has, it has the, it already had the makings to be a good show because the manga itself is fantastic. But it's always, it's always that one thing you fear of not the adaptation will do it justice, or not the adaptation will go above and beyond. 
but it seems like it actually has adapted it to the point that it doesn't very kind of feel as if it's actually kind of warranted. It feels very kind of anti A1 Pictures, if you get what I mean. It feels like A1 Pictures actually kind of tried. Because certainly sometimes you kind of get the whole entire idea that like their shows are good, but they kind of can be better sometimes. But this show is good. Well, this show is fantastic, but it's actually like they're kind of going above and beyond the whole entirety of like Aeon Pictures is known for. It's really freaking cool. I actually like it a lot. I think it's actually just, it's one of those shows that's really surprised me so much. Like, it's one of those ones I didn't expect to actually be this good. And I was, I was like, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. It's going to be Aeon Pictures level good. But never like Aeon Pictures are like bringing their A-game kind of territory of like anime. But yeah, I mean... I liked this episode a lot as well. It's just, it's just everything about this episode. Which was, it was really, it was like, it's really fantastic because it kind of, the actual battles themselves kind of seem way too outlandish for their own good. But it works in the context of the narrative itself because the way that the show is set up, the actual events themselves do in theory play out correctly and how they should in theory play out in the way that the show is actually kind of present, presenting it. And I like the fact that th there's actually certain events that the, that the two main characters think about that. They think it's going to go that way, but in theory, no, it's not. It's not that at all. It's not how it's going to go. It's just going to go completely differently. It kind of works in. It kind of works in how I said about Banana Fish being the kind of allegory with La La Land. Same thing applies here in a way. Like the events that Shiragane kind of thinks about do, in theory, kind of make you think that that's what you want to see. That's what should in theory happen. That's what. That's how we as an audience understand rom romance to go. It's always that starry night. And then they kind of say, oh, look, look at these stars. They're like, they're, like, they're like us. And that's when they kind of fall in love. But we know that's not how narratives do in theory work in real life sometimes. It's like how this show kind of contradicts that completely. It's hit my, hit my watch. Kind of contradicts that completely. It actually says, no, that's actually how this narrative will not go. I like that about this show because then the smaller moments in the show do in theory pack a, be pack a bigger punch because of that reason. Because the reason is it's subverting what actually happens. So when these things happen that are outside of what you what actually knows actually happened in the show, it feels even more genuine. That's why I actually like about this show a lot. It's like the little moments doing free just just work so much better because of it. It's one of the ones I just kind of I can't fault the show. I mean, if more people actually watch this show, it just ah oh man, the direction is just so freaking good. The shots are amazing. Like the use of the VHS world as well. It kind of sounds weird. But it's like I'm it's like I'm talking about Persona, but the VHS world itself is it Persona VHS? Well, I can't remember now. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of them has a VHS world in it. I'm trying to remember. Is it Persona 4 that has a VHS world? Well, it has a TV world. But, you know what I mean. But, yeah, it's it's just that whole entire VHS, like, kind of aesthetic. Just, it works so well. It actually kind of heightened the actual kind of, like, in a way, homage they're paying to. And then they had the shot, basically, from James Bond. It's one of those things. It kind of just, it makes the whole entire thing go full circle. Because it was actually referencing it, referencing it in the opening, but now you actually have the shot that establishes James Bond in a way. The whole thing with the actual gunshot, the gunshot barrel, and then it actually shoots. But in the in this context, it's completely different because as to how the show works as well. It kind of subverts what you expect to actually happen. In that case, it does in three happen there as well. So yeah, I mean. Oh boy, this show is fantastic. This show has really surprised me so much. I'm, I'm just, I'm in awe. I mean, A1 Pictures, you get my applause this week as well. I mean, I don't know what's happening over there, but just continue like this. Just continue. I, I, I love you. I love you for this. I just, I need more shows like this in life. I just need more shows that are directed like this because it feels very, it feels very energetic. It doesn't really feel as if it's just kind of very stale. It feels like every single scene has something going on. If you get what I mean, it's what we kind of need because certainly sometimes shows doing free kind of suffer from being just kind of. But then you have like certain ep certain shows that come along and actually have that sense of direction that kind of elevates certain like normal scenes beyond what they actually can in free achieve. And this show actually has that. I, I believe this show is actually fantastic for that reason as well. The, sh the shots doing free just make the actual kind of. It's scenes that don't really kind of have much going on have more have more going on. It kind of feels like there's, a, there's actually a sense of pace. If you get what I mean. Like each 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 scene has a purpose to be there, which is what I actually kind of like to see. Like each scene just has a purpose, and it's just it's so fantastic. So yeah, that is me done for today. So as always, if you have enjoyed this whole interaction as a whole, then do do leave a follow on Twitch because indeed there's something quite a bit. If you haven't here on YouTube and you do want to leave a like, then do leave a like because indeed there's something quite a bit. If you haven't here on YouTube and you do want to stay a bit longer, then do leave a sub because indeed there's something quite a bit. 
And the HMS Elizabeth Longbrath the whole entire point, and do in theory follow me on Twitter because indeed that actually, actually does help me quite a bit. On Twitter, actually, will then know when your streams go live, any of the streams I do as well, and also actually, I actually don't have a Twitter account. I do in theory have a Discord server as well. Discord doesn't free tell when your streams go live, any other streams I do as well. But until next time, episode 3 of Hey Summer Love is War. I'll see you guys later. Bye for now.